Okay, so we've started looking at uh, transformations in a complex plane. We have looked at translations, so if you have a z and you just add another complex constant to x, you just translate it by uh, some vector. Okay. Um, now we want to uh, we want to look at rotation about the origin. Okay, so if you have the locus or a point, say z, the complex plane, and then you multiply it by um, this expression here, cosine of theta plus i sine theta, okay, we should also represent that e to the i theta from OLS formula, right? So this can be rewritten as that. Now, so if you multiply the complex number z by s, what you are doing is that you are affecting the rotation, okay, about the origin through an angle of theta degrees. Okay, so that is uh, that basically represents rotation. So for example, if I have um, I have a complex number z, which um, I can I will use two plus two i. Okay. Now a second complex number z two, which is my f of z here, let it be equal to z multiplied by uh, let's say cosine of i of two plus i sine of i of two. Okay. If I do this. Um, so this of course is z e to the power i pi over 2. Now so so if you multiply your complex number by this, what do you get? And then we'll go to the graph and take a look at the transformation that occurs. So if you do that, of course cos of pi over 2 is 0, sine pi over 2 is 1, alright? So this is basically equal to um, i times z, right? So I'm going to have i multiplied by z. So I'm going to use this part of the, um, the curve because I'll use this. So what is this? So now your z2 will be equal to i multiplied by z. We said z is 2 plus 2i, right? So that is equal to basically 2i. This and this will give you 2i squared. i squared is negative, so this is negative 2. So basically this is equal to negative 2 plus 2. So this is a transformed point, right, or vector. So we have our original z, okay, which is 2 and 2. So 2, 2 is here. If you like, this is this vector here. Okay, that is z. 2 and 2. And now this is, if I multiply by this quantity here, right, know that it doesn't matter, okay, um, while well, the angle matters. But as long as you multiply by something that looks like this, you're going to have a transformation. That's what we are saying. So you have this. My z2 now becomes negative 2 and what? 2. Negative 2, 2 is what? Negative 2, 2. Okay? This one. So the vector corresponding, corresponding to this is basically this, right? So this is my z2. Okay? So it's easy to actually check, right? To check that this makes an angle of uh, 90 degrees over here. And that angle is the same as the angle we put in here, pi over 2. Okay? So basically, when you multiply by um, this quantity or e to the it, what you are doing to the complex number is that you are rotating, rotating it, all right? By, um, by that angle there. So in this case, it is. Um, it is pi over 2. And in fact, this is this is actually more general. Whenever you multiply i by a complex number, you are rotating the complex number through 90 degrees counterclockwise. Okay? Counterclockwise. If you multiply by negative i, you're going to rotate it clockwise, okay, through 90 degrees. Okay? So you should, you should keep that um, keep that in mind. So this this i times i always gives you a 90 degree rotation counterclockwise, and negative i will give you a clockwise uh, rotation. Okay, so this is a simple example to illustrate this. I mean, you can do the same thing and, and plug in, let's say, pi on 3, right? Pi over 3, pi over 3, and then you get a complex number. And then again, you see that it's a rotation, but it's a, the rotation is about, you know, it's uh, the angle there. 
Good. So that is a uh, rotation. We want to look at uh, the next one, which is reflection. Okay, reflection um, in the real axis. So the fourth one is reflection. Reflection in the real axis. Okay, so let's uh, let's get this here. So reflection. Ah, I could probably use that. So number four is reflection about or uh, in the real house. That is the house. Okay. So the transformation f of z is equal to z bar. If you take the conjugates of the complex number, what you're doing is actually doing a reflection about the um, real horizontal axis. So this affects um, reflection, a reflection, a reflection about, about the real about the real axis. Okay, so we can use the same point. Let's take z to be equal to 2 plus 2i. Okay? What happens if I take the conjugate of this? z bar will be 2 and negate this. This is negative 2i. See? So, how does this look? We already have this, okay, on our graph. So, 2, 2 was z, which is this. z bar is 2, negative 2. So, 2 and negative 2 is right there. So, is this you see so this is z bar so is this point which is reflected the point here is reflected about the real this is the real axis and then boom you are here okay so if i have the point that is here okay z which is three and three i if I take the conjugate of that, I'll have 3 and negative 3i. Three, 3 and negative 3i, three, which is here. So it's basically a reflection, reflection of this about the real axis, and then the line here, all that z3, which is z bar. Okay? Z bar, in this case, this guy. 3 minus 3i. You know, here. So if you take the point here, take the conjugate, your reflection about the real axis. Here, if you take this one for instance, the conjugate of that is 3 negative 3, and it's a reflection about the um, real axis. Okay? So, whenever you take a conjugate of a complex number, then what you're doing basically is that you are affecting a reflection about the real axis. Of course, if I, if I then multiply, I mean, it's probably easy to get, right? If I then multiply this by some constant, right? Alpha, then of course I'm reflecting it at the same time I'm scaling it, right? Stretching or you know enlarging or reducing it, right? Because we already know that k can z, that's what it does, right? You are scaling or enlarging this by a factor k. So basically you are enlarging or scaling this one by a factor of alpha. Alright? Good. So I'm not going to do that. Is, is clear from what we've done already. So that is our reflection. The next that um, we want to do, the fourth, the fifth transformation that we want to look at is that we want to look at our uh, inversion. Okay, what does inversion do? So, number five, um, inversion, inverse of. Actually, the index, what it does is that um, inversion is actually um, a reflection and a scale. So I will say uh, reflection, reflection about real axis and stretch or scale. Okay? So this is it. If I have f of z is equal to one over z. If you if you have one over a complex.
maximum amount. What we are doing is that we are going to reflect it. I will show you. We are going to reflect it about a real as we do for the conjugate, but then you multiply by some factor. So we are basically scaling it or stretching it. Okay. So um, this is this this is this represents this effects may continue with the same language effects. Um, the reflection, reflection about the real axis followed by followed by the scaling, the scaling by the factor. The factor, let's call it alpha, which is basically one over z bar square. Okay. One over the absolute value of um, the complex number square. Well, let's prove that. Okay. So we have. Um, so let me uh, let me get rid of these guys now. I'm going to leave the graph. Okay. And then, so I'll leave this, and then we'll prove we'll prove uh, we'll prove this this one. So. So this, you have f of z, okay? f of z uh, is equal to 1 over z, all right? Now, if I multiply, this is the same as, I'm going to multiply the top and bottom by the conjugate. That gives me z bar all over z times z bar. So I'm doing mean that, right? If z, for instance, was a plus b, if I have 1 over a plus bi, it's a complex number, and I want to write this in a standard form, I'll have to multiply this by the conjugate and the top by the conjugate as well. So that's what I'm doing here. Okay? Now, if you multiply a complex number by its conjugate, you're going to have the absolute value of z squared. Okay? If I have uh, z is equal to a plus bi or ib, then z times z bar is a plus ib multiplied by a minus ib. Difference of two squares, so that's basically, this will be squared plus b squared. Plus a, but a squared plus b squared is the absolute value of z squared. See that? So z times z bar is b squared. So this is basically 1 over the absolute value of z squared multiplied by z bar. So if I take the inverse of a complex number, all right, what I do is that I'm going to have the conjugate of x, and we know that the conjugate is a reflection, we just showed that, right? The conjugate is a reflection about the real numbers, but then you have to multiply by this by this factor here. So you scale, you reflect it, but you have to scale it, right, by this factor, okay? So if this is one over two, for instance, it means you have to, after you reflect it, you have to scale it, reduce it, or increase by this factor. Okay? So if I take, for instance, um, so let's take, let's do, um, let me finish one example here. So if I have a complex number, z is equal to, um, let's take z is equal to uh, 1 plus 2i, okay, uh, what does f of z, 1 over z do, okay, 1 over z, so this is 1 over z, if you follow this, is equal to 1 over the absolute value of z squared multiplied by z bar. z bar is 1 minus 2i. Okay? What is the absolute value of z? That's square root of what? Squared and squared. By squared, and we have this squared. That's 1 plus this squared. That's 4. That's 4 into 5. So basically, 1 over z is 1 over 5. Alright? Multiplied by 1 minus 2i. So if z is 1, 2, 1, 2, which is here, all right, that's z, is this, okay, that's z, 
1 minus uh, 2i would be 1 negative 2i is here. Alright? So you have reflected it. But this is not going to come all the way here. Right? See that it's going to be reduced by 1 over 5. Okay? So you have reflected it about the real axis, but then it's going to be, let's say, somewhere, somewhere there. And that will be your 1 over z. Okay? And the distance here is 1 over the absolute value of z. Okay? So whenever you take the inverse of the complex number, you are doing a reflection. Um, hold on. So you are doing a reflection, right? Ah. You are doing a reflection about, about this, but you don't get this far because you scale it and then you reduce it like that. So that was that was fun. Okay, I hope that is that is clear uh, enough. Alright? So you have the quantity what led by some stage about that. Okay. So I'll come back and finish off, you know, with something that we have seen before. So see you.